you're watching this video, you probably have heard about anti-furries or furries. So today, we're going to discuss the debates between them and a little bit more. There are two sides of this problem. Them being anti-furry coalition and furry fandom, respectively. Let's discuss the furry fandom first. Furry fandom, what is it? According to the Wikipedia and Furpedia, a furry fandom is a group of people who are interested in anthropomorphical animals or characters. Anthropomorphical animals or characters are rather characters or animals who have human characteristics. People who are associated with this fandom are called furries. If singular, furry. In Spanish, furro. And in short, furs. The logic of common people like so comes from the English word furry, adjective, which means being fluffy or covered with fur. While anthropomorphical animals appeared long time ago, the fandom itself appeared in 1980s in North America and exists to this day, having a number of members of 2 million and growing. The furry fandom is also known for having their own interest of making or wearing fursuits. The fursuit is a costume of an animal which a furry wears to represent itself or its character or alter ego to public and act or roleplay as one. In addition, furries are known for their sociability, so sometimes they gather on furry conventions where they spend time together playing games, singing, dancing and having conversations. How do you know if you are a furry? One thing all furries have in common in their fursonas, the anthropomorphical representation of their alter ego or character. If you don't have one, you cannot call yourself a furry. However, if you are interested in supporting this fandom, you can call yourself a furry supporter. A person who supports furry fandom or activity, yet does not consider itself a furry. The most popular fursonas are usually feline, canine, avian, reptilian, anthropomorphical animals. Sometimes fursonas can be mythical animals like dragons or unicorns. In some occasions, fursonas can be mixed, example, half deer, half wolf, or have its own unique style or typing, like protogen. Furries are also famous for their passion of being creative, representative, sociable, and supportive towards their members. This fandom is also known for the talented artists and their artwork like games, furry games, fur suiting, and more. Interesting fact, furries are often mistaken for Therians, and Therians are often mistaken for furries. However, these two fandoms have only a few things in common, them being quite different. Please do not mistake one with another. Use Wikipedia or other trustful resources to find about them more. The anti-furry coalition, however, dislikes such activities and find them quite unethical, inappropriate and disgusting. An anti-furry coalition is a group of people who have united to rather the lower the influence of furry fandom on other fandoms and to show them how wrong their actions are. Anti-furries are here to turn furries away from the furry community by making them see the wrong in the community that they may not have been aware of. They do this through various forms of media or interaction throughout the community. The people who are members of this coalition are called anti-furries, also referred as furry haters by furries. The coalition was created back in 1997. The amount of people in this coalition is unknown. The origin is unknown as well. A like furry fandom entrance to the anti-furry coalition is quite difficult. The beginner must be accepted by other anti-furries. If the request is denied, you cannot call yourself an anti-furry, otherwise you will be called a heretic and will face serious consequences, like being publicly shamed by an entire coalition and kicked out with a shame, and you will always be remembered as a bad person in that coalition. If you happen to find yourself interested in joining the coalition, contact Experience Anti-Furries. Link will be in the description. Interesting fact. Most anti-furries are male. The chances to find female anti-furry are extremely rare. Depending on the region, the odds of finding one can increase or decrease. It's important to note, anti-furries are not here to spread hate or to bully those to their downfall. Anti-furries here are to help those to see the wrong in what they are doing 
and to show them a brighter future than they can have if they simply see what they are becoming. It is important to stop them in time so they won't fall into the abyss of madness. As mentioned earlier, this coalition consists of small groups. Please count that the groups were made by criterions based on similar languages or culture or a specific type of interests. These groups being North American anti fairies, South American, European, African, Western Asian, Southern Asian, Australian, and Russian. One of the most debated questions in the anti fairy versus fairy situation is the reasons why anti fairy dislike fairies so much. Here are the most popular reasons. There is a big chance there is even more of them, and highlighted reasons are the most important. Number one. Spreading NSFW content online, and by that I mean furry. <clears throat> the main platform for Affinity is absolutely not age restricted, despite it having tons of NSFW content, which allows underage people access it with ease. Number three, dragging children in their not family friendly fandom. Number four, Despite being fully aware of why they're hated so much, furries do not take any action on fixing the mayor problem or problems of their fandom. Number five, when furries are faced up with the arguments against their activity, they only come up with excuses, not the solutions of solving the problem. Number six, furries cannot accept any form of criticism, even if it's very polite, not aggressive note or something. Number seven, Furries are constantly comparing themselves or their activity to cosplayers, stating that they are doing what cosplayers are doing. And these two fandoms are completely different and have nothing in common. Number 8. Most furries are obsessed or sexually attracted to anthropomorphical characters. Here are the statistics. Number 9. Furry fandom artists sexualize characters from kid cartoons and games like Kung Fu Panda, Sonic, How to Train Your Dragon, etc. Number 10. Complete ignore of the mayor problem. Zoophiles, pedophiles, and more of nasty people are hiding amongst so-called good furries, being completely invincible, which can lead to a lot of accidents. Number 11. Some furries have weird fetishes such as adiphophilia, zoophilia, pedophilia, etc. Number 12. Some furries are being supportive towards dangerous people, despite them being already exposed to public as a bad person. Take care of the wolf supporters and court kitty supporters as an example. Number 13. Having a bad influence on other fandoms by making an SMW content, or for that matter, artwork about it. Take as an example these fandoms, FNAF, Pokemon, Sonic Universe, Undertale, Adventure Time, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, Zootopia, Star Wars, and more. Number 14. Some fairies are disrespecting religion, like Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, etc. By expressing hatred towards it and making offenses towards people, which hurts feelings of billions. Number 15. The Discord furry servers are flooded with YIF content, which can be accessible by an underage person. Number 16. Some furries are coming up with misogynistic insults towards female anti-furries or even furries, which is completely unacceptable by a fandom that claims to be family-friendly. Number 17. Sometimes furries coming up with offenders towards anti-furries and or furry haters, usually after furries, are faced up with some argument against their activity, which are based on age, gender, personal beliefs, and race. This behavior can be considered as a hate crime. Number 18. The existence of sub-furry culture Nazi furry fandom, which propagates Nazism, chauvinism, racism, and other form of unacceptable behavior and perspectives. Number 19. Furries claiming that they are mature by calling anti-furries immature. In addition, their matureness usually measures in age, not EI, emotional intelligence, or IQ. Usually it turns out, in some cases, that furries are much younger than anti-furries. Number 12, 1 and 2. Followed by previous one, furries are getting offended by anti-furry content, even if they were warned with a disclaimer. 
In addition, they cannot differ satire, humor, and jokes from real offenses. Number 21. Some fairies are living in their dreams and fantasies of being an animal or anthropomorphic animal. Number 22. Some fairies see the world through pink glasses and completely ignoring any mentioned problems, stating that their phantom is completely fine. Number 23. When debating, fairies commonly use three arguments. Number one, not all fairies are bad. Number two, not all fairies are zoophiles. And number three, being a furry is just a hobby. Number 24. Sometimes furries are used in LGBTQ community to defend their own interest, like normalizing attractions towards animals. How? Usually with arguments or media. We are part of LGBTQ community, so hating us is considered homophobic, quote. Number 25. Furries very often cannot come up with normal argument to defend themselves or attack the opposing opinion, usually anti furries opinion. Number 26. When debated, most furries are acting childish, in other words, immature, during the discussion or debate. Number 27. When faced with undebatable facts like data analysis, screenshots, statistics, web pages from trustful resources like Wikipedia, some fairies are instantly calling those untrue without even taking a proper look at the argument. In other words, for what reason they need to start a debate only to ignore the opposing opinion. Number 28. In 90% of occasions, fairies cannot come up with shorter responses towards the arguments made by anti fairies which leads them to type in insanely long comments or posts, which leads me to conclude that a plenty of furries never heard of term in brevity. Number 29. That by previous reason, in the most of the times, furries cannot type without making tons of grammatical or punctuational mistakes in the comments, yet they are still claiming that they are smarter and better than anti-furries. Number 30. Some furries are behaving inappropriate in public, and most cannot have a normal dialogue online, with non-furries or especially anti-furries. Now, there is a big probability there is even more of reasons why anti-furry is like furries and or furry fandom, yet these are the most common ones. If you have any questions about anti-furries or anti-furry coalition, feel free to ask in the comments. Keep in mind that the expert of this field is a nice guy who goes by a nickname HelloGuy7. If you have any questions, better ask him. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.